Welcome back to NB Media and Content. Today I'll be featuring a Porsche Panamera S, the 970 generation. A car that can take you and three other passengers in total comfort, yet at high speed. And it was also the first Porsche four-door sedan that debuted back in 2009. And including all of its options and equipment fitted, brand new this would have set you back just over 300,000 Australian dollars and it has now become a used car bargain. This particular one is for sale for 60,000 Australian dollars. Before we dive into the tour, let's talk about a brief overview about the Panamera. It was in direct competition with the Maserati Quattroporte and the Aston Martin Rapide. And as I mentioned, it was Porsche's first production four-door sedan. However, it was not the company's first attempt at making a four-door rival to its German competitors. Porsche did showcase a few concept cars during the 1980s and the 1990s. A great example was the forgotten 989 concept car a worthy successor for the 928. However, these prototypes never went into production. Instead, Porsche focused on creating cars like the more affordable Boxster in 1997, and then its revised 911 with its new water-cooled engine. And with the increasing demand of SUVs, later came the Porsche Cayenne in the early 2000s. It wasn't until 2009, Porsche finally unveiled their full production four-door Panamera, known internally as the 970 series. And lastly, I'd like to thank Prestige Connects for allowing me to film their Porsche Panamera S listed for sale at their showroom in Waterloo, Sydney. I've listed their details in the description below, but for now, let's continue on with the tour. Let's talk about the exterior design of the Panamera. So up front, it featured by Xenon headlights. And if we move on to the side, as you can see, it features the classic teardrop wing mirrors. And this particular example is fitted with the optional $7,000 20 inch turbo style alloy wheels with six piston brake calipers up front and four piston at the rear. And moving towards the rear design of the Panamera, so this section of the styling wasn't to everybody's taste. However, the reason why the Panamera was designed this way, the engineers wanted the Panamera to seat two adults in perfect comfort in the back. So that meant the Panamera featured a higher roof line as well as a fastback design rather than a traditional boot lid like on the Quattroporte and other luxury limousines. And it also is equipped with LED lights, a rear spoiler that deploys up and down with a push of a button. And in terms of colors, the Panamera was offered in a wide range of metallic finishes and special paint options. And they were all free of charge according to Redbook for the Panamera. And this particular example is finished in basalt black metallic. Okay, moving on to the interior. So first impressions, considering this car came out way back in 2009, it doesn't actually feel out of date. And there's a good reason for that because Porsche debuted their latest design language in this generation Panamera. It feels very similar to the second generation KN or the 991 series Porsche Carrera. And that means you get high quality materials around the cabin. So a lot of the wrapped steering wheel, gear knob, soft touch materials on the dashboard, the sculptured bucket style seats with the Porsche logo engraved in the center, as well as buttons along here. And the overall cabin is finished in beige, which gives it a nice luxurious combination. This particular Panamera is fitted with the Walnut veneer interior package. So what that includes is the Bell Walnut timber along the dashboard, along the center console and on the doors. Other options include a sunroof, sports chrono package, a Bose Hi-Fi sound system, front and rear parking sensors, heated and ventilated seats up front, and heated rear seats. And to get comfortable, the seats do offer plenty of adjustment with lumbar support. It's very easy to get a really nice driving position, and the steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment on the electric steering column. Some other key features included a touchscreen infotainment system, which is actually pretty responsive considering the age of the car. You get things like inbuilt sunlight navigation, Bluetooth streaming for music and telephone calls. And in the center, it features the traditional Porsche gauge cluster. So that means in the center, it features a rev counter going all the way up to 6,500 RPM. On the left side, that is your speedo going up to 330. And on the right side, you can see a digital display showing navigation, which was a unique highlight of this generation. You can actually go down the menus, telephone menu, trip, computer, tire pressure, what's chrono. So it is slightly configurable for a car of this generation. But lastly, compared to the standard 911 sports car, the Panamera feels more spacious inside and it is more practical. So starting with the doors, it has large pop-out side bins, decent size practicality in the center with a 12 volt socket, 
little cigarette lighter there, a decent sized glove box, as well as a large cup holder in the center. And if I pop this down, and press these buttons, you have two additional cup holders. In the back seats, there's plenty of room for an adult over six foot. I've got plenty of knee room, toe room, and head room, and some creature comforts like heated rear seats, air conditioning vents, some additional storage in the center with a 12 volt socket, a cup holder here, mat pockets, and this fold down armrest with some additional storage, as well as sculptured rear seats and a rear sunshade. Moving on to boot space, the Panamera was offered with a power tailgate as standard. It's not quite as big as a 7 series limousine, but it's definitely bigger than your standard Porsche 911 because the Panamera is a fastback. However, if you do require some additional storage, you can fold the seats down, which makes it as spacious as a station wagon. But overall, with the seats up, there's plenty of space. Under the bonnet, you'll find a 4.8 litre naturally aspirated V8 engine and it's mated to a seven speed sports automatic dual clutch gearbox. It produces 294 kilowatts and 500 newton meters of torque, sending all of that power to the rear wheels. So now let's take it for a drive. So what does the Panamera like to drive if you're gonna use it every day? Well, it's quite smooth and refined actually. What I've noticed this gearbox is a lot more gentle than what you'd find in the Porsche 911. You'll find the suspension is a little bit bumpy and you have to go really slow over speed humps and driveways as the car does have a long overhang at the front. In terms of comfort, it doesn't have the same Rolls-Royce ride quality what you'd find on a Mercedes-Benz S-Class, in this case a 2010 W221 S63 AMG. But the S63 feels like a big heavy car, it doesn't go around corners quite as well as this car. And that's what makes the Panamera unique because the car has two personalities. It's an ultra luxurious four-door sedan that you could take to the racetrack. So if I put the car into sport and open up the exhaust with this button here, to second, give it a little tap. As you can hear, it has a fantastic exhaust note. But overall, the Panamera will give you a fantastic driving experience. Brakes are very responsive, the throttle is responsive, it has that loud V8 grumble. So that's my short driving experience. Now let's wrap up this video with a verdict. So what's my conclusion on the Panamera 970 series? The styling is not to everybody's taste. However, it is a car you can definitely appreciate. A sports car and a limousine, all in one package.